name is Grant Kastner. If you don't know me by now, but I am Extempore's community manager. Um, I've been running a lot of the PD extravaganza that we've been doing this summer. Really, really excited to have you here today. This is introducing your students to Extempore, the first steps you will take. And it is part of our Extempore 2021 PD extravaganza. Like I said, I am Grant. It is great to see you here today. Um, and if you are following along and you are a tweeter, please feel free to use the hashtag Extempore PD uh, and let us know what you think of this session, anything you're learning, any insights you wanna share. Um, but let's get started. So some of you earlier today, we had a session called Extempore 101. I don't know, maybe some of you attended that, maybe not. I want to just differentiate first how this is going to be different from that session. So Sam earlier, he did the little basic demonstration of how Extempore works. This is gonna be a little more in-depth on, you know, getting to use Extempore in your classes and using it right away. So. What is important to remember when introducing students to a new app? One, it can take some time. I think, I think a lot of teachers, myself included, sort of understand that, you know, when you hear about a new app, like, oh, this is so cool. Wow, I really want to use this. This is great. There's so many things I can do. But at the same time, there is an adjustment period, right? There's a learning curve. You have to take the time and figure out how to use it. How are you going to implement it in your class? How are your students going to respond to it? Are they going to like it? Are they going to get used to it quickly, right? So, what we're doing today, what I'm going to talk about primarily today is going from the whole great another new app to, oh, sweet, this is just some practice on extempore. How do we get from this, you know, maybe a begrudging feeling here to, oh, wow, this is super easy. I've done this a million times. Obviously, consistency and using it a lot is one thing, but there are other steps that we can take. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Uh, and then, so in this session, some initial steps, like I mentioned, I'll show you guys an extempore introductory task, which is conveniently called extempore 101. And then I'll introduce some basic practice, some very low pressure practice that you can do. And then finally, adding timers and getting your students used to it to that point. As we are going along this presentation or this webinar, please feel free to ask questions at any time. The chat is there. I will answer them. Wait, this is a very, very informal presentation. Um, so like I said, questions, comments, feel free to share. So without further ado, let's jump into things. So here I have my extempore class as a teacher. This is my class page, PD Extravaganza 2021, and I have an assessment waiting for me. The first thing that I would like that I should do as a teacher is add students to my class. So you'll notice right now that I don't have any students. Best thing for me to do is add those students. So I can take this link that I have from my class, copy it, let's copy the clipboard, paste it in here. And now I can add students to my class. I've already done this in a different window. So what you'll see is students will likely have to create a new account. They get in here, they can add, and then they can get into your class. So they fill out this form. I'm gonna refresh this page and it should show up. Like I said, I have another window right here. Here is my community manager. He is in the class. And so once you share this link with your students, all of them will be, once they, you know, they share, they complete the form, they fill it out, they get into your class, then they're ready to go. So then you might be wondering, well, what, what is this extempore 101? What is, what is, how can I use this to help my students? So a while back, I created this extempore 101 assignment as sort of like an introductory task on extempore for students to use in order to see how it works. I will show you that right now. So if I jump over, there's another window, I'll drag this over out of the way. If I jump over to the student page, this is the student screen, I'll jump back. This is the student portal. Obviously I work here, I have a ton of classes. If I find my class, PD Extravaganza 2021, I find my class, I then see that I have an assessment waiting for me, Extempore 101. Let's see what that entails. And I'll see why I encourage you to share this with your students when you were first introducing extempore to them. So I gave a little description and this, this whole assessment I will share at the end of the, um, at the end of this webinar, there is a link, you can click it and you import it directly into your account and you can, then you can use it right away. You don't have to retype or recreate all of these questions. So with extempore instructors can give video, audio or text prompts and students can respond with either video, audio or text. So right away telling you how it works. For this set of questions, you'll respond with audio. Sometimes there are timers for how long you can see the prompt and how much time you have to respond. Other times when timers are added, like in Q5, we'll see, you'll only have one opportunity to respond to the question. That means no do-overs. Try out these questions and see how the app works. So 
Pretty straightforward. Like I said, this is just a variety of different questions that students can answer to see you know, what the questions might look like. So for example, if I say that there are timers in Q5, I click Q5s, oh, oh my gosh, that has timers in it. I better not do that one now. We'll do that one at the end. So I'm just gonna go through these very briefly one by one and show you what the student will see when they are doing this and how that can help them adjust and get used to a new platform. Question one, some questions will only be text. What are you looking forward to? What has been your favorite part of learning languages in previous years? And then they can record. It's very straightforward, very user-friendly, nice little countdown. Uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting new people and making friends and learning a lot from my teachers. I'm not going to answer the second question because I'm a bad student, uh, but then they can see, you know, very, very intuitive. They can replay their response. They can re-record it if they're not satisfied or they can submit their attempt and they submit and that's gone. It goes to the submitted file or submitted folder. Very, very straightforward. Very clear. Go through each one of these. <gasps> oh my gosh. There's no text. What, what do we do? Maybe we should put play. Some questions will only have audio. What is your name? And what's something I should know about you? Ooh, so we can add audio too. Interesting. So now I can answer this. My name is Grant and I work for Extempore. Have my recording, just like the last one. Record, submit. And at this point, I think they're starting to get used to it. Question three, then pairs them up, right? Just adding elements here. What do you think of Extempore so far? Is it easy to use? Play the response, play the prompts, record my, my response. Wow, Mr. Kastner, I had no idea extempore would be so easy to use. Stop recording. Again, play, re-record, submit. This will all change on question five. And then question four, goes a little bit of a curveball. Oh, look, who is that guy? I don't know who that person is. Some questions will have videos for you to consult. Do you have any questions for me about anything? I don't. Nope, I'm all good, Mr. Kastner. Thank you. Stop recording. Again, very straightforward. So just from those first four, I'm not, I'll get into five in just a second. Just from those four, first four example questions, and you can replace that video of me with one of yourself if you so choose, or you can just keep the random guy. Um, shows that there can be text, there can be text and audio, there can be just audio, or there can be just video. And like I said, I like using this because it's a very, very easy way for students to see, oh, okay, this is how the platform works, as opposed to maybe being shocked or like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I wasn't expecting to see that on, on this platform, something like that. Um, so then we'll get into five, and this with five, that we'll see. Time to review, 10 seconds, time to respond, 15 seconds. So they're given the prompt beforehand telling them, you only get one chance on this. Would you like to start now? Okay, let's jump into it. Some questions will have timers for both preparation and your response. When the time to prepare hits zero, oh no, the recording will start automatically. Are you getting the hang of this yet? They see that it's a countdown. They see exactly how the timer works and they see that they need to start speaking right away. Uh, I guess it's pretty easy. Yes, I love it. Stop recording. Again, but this time they see there's no re-record. They can't re-record it. They can only play it back. And they see that they need to start speaking and then they can submit their attempt. Okay, I have gone through Extempore 101. They've seen that it, it starts in the active folder and it moves to the completed folder when they are completed. Very simple, very intuitive. Are there any questions for now that I can answer before I move forward? Yes, no, maybe. Oh man, God, people just keep coming in. Fantastic. Any questions I can answer? Good, we good, is this exciting? You feeling confident? Oh, have a Q&A, okay. So Linda, Linda asks, once an answer has been submitted, it can no longer be edited right. Yes, that is correct. And students will know that because if they go to the completed section, they can see, I don't know, I might have saved my on. right. They can see the response is there, but you cannot, they can't edit it, they can't redo it. Once regardless of the prompt, if it's text, if it's a video response, if it's a, sorry, if they're typing their response, if it's a video response, if it's an audio response, as soon as they click that green submit button, it is sent into the other. It is no longer available for them to, to re-record unless the instructor manually deletes it and allows for them to redo it. So these stay here until the teacher 
x upon it. And you see it's in the submitted folder. Okay, thank you, Linda, thank you for the question. That was a good question. Okay, so now here I am on the student side. I'm gonna jump back to the teacher side of things. And so now you might be thinking, well, okay, you know, I, I have my students using, using extempore. They've done extempore 101. They're feeling comfortable with it. What's next? What's next? Can I start using timers? Can I start giving summative assessments? As an instructor, that might be very, for me, for me as an instructor, I think, you know, it's obviously a very exciting thing to do. Start adding timers, start making them, you know, do all of these very challenging things that you want them to do, you know, show, show off their language skills. But something I would say again, as a language teacher is that you want to really ease your students into using the platform. One of the ways that I would suggest doing that is, if we look at our little outline, some basic, very low pressure tasks that they can do. One of which, or two of which, one that I will present today is oral reading. And what that is, if you are familiar with, is simply basically just reading a text out loud, practicing their skills. So I'll create a new assessment and we might call it Task number one, oral reading. You can choose the start and end time. This is all for the student. So it's gonna be individual. They'll respond with audio. I'll say this is an oral reading task. Read the text out loud as best as you can. Right, and so oral reading is just, they, they have a text right in front of them and all they have to do is read out loud. It's very, very, very low pressure. And it's an easy way for them to, to use the app consistently and in a low pressure way. I'm not gonna randomize anything, I'm just gonna do one question, no timers or anything. Again, emphasizing low pressure, right? Getting students to simply just produce the language. Okay, and I can say prompt uh, oral reading one. You can see I do this a lot. And our question text, I will do this in English just for the sake of things. The weather today is just dandy. Mike said he wants to go to the park later. And I think that's a great idea. Let's see. For, new, for now, every assignment is a graded assignment, correct? Uh, Linda, let me answer that at the end. That's a little bit of a longer, a longer, a longer question. A long, that, ha, that question has a longer answer. Um, I will answer that towards the end. Okay. Uh, so I have my text and I'm gonna add a little reminder to my students, read the text out loud using emotion and yeah, using emotion. Okay, so they're ready. And then one thing for this type of prompt, again, this is just extra, extra scaffolding on behalf of the teacher. If you want to, you might upload your, not upload, you might record yourself using, or sorry, you might record yourself record yourself using the audio and just reading this prompt out loud. So if you're teaching Spanish, French, I teach Chinese. If you think it would help them better understand how to read this, then go ahead, add yourself reading the audio file or reading the text that you have. So I might have say, say here, the weather today is just dandy. Mike said he wants to go to the park later. And I think that's a great idea. So I do that as opposed to just, just giving this to your students and they say, the weather today is just dandy. Mike said he wants to go to the park later. I think that's a great idea, right? Using emotion. I've talked about this in other webinars. Um, yes, anyways. Uh, Jacqueline, I believe, raised her hand. If you want to pose your question, go ahead. I'd be happy to, to field it if, it's, if now is a good time. So I have my prompts, I have my directions. I have my text that they're gonna read. I have my audio file. I'm gonna hit next and now I can drag back my student class window right here, refresh the page, and it should show up. Take a brief drink of water so I can catch my breath. So yes, so is it possible to have different recording times for different students on the same task? That is something I can answer um, as well. We recommend so you can create a different class or you can create a different assessment for those students and then you can alter the, I believe you're talking about differentiation and probably for, um, what am I trying to say? Accommodations, right? Accommodation to various students and giving them extra time. Um, yeah, we get this question a lot. It is definitely something we're going to include in future updates. 
but for, for now what we would suggest is creating a separate class and then having students just in that class and they then that way other students won't even know um, that those accommodations are being provided hopefully that makes sense so now like i said i'm back on my student side of things i can see i have a task waiting for me task number one oral reading this is an oral reading task read the text out loud as best as you can i'm just going to take a step back again just to reiterate that the essence the content of this webinar is introducing your students to extempore i like using oral readings again if you've been on webinars before i talked about this ad nauseum but I, I really really like it because it's very 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 low pressure there's very little that the student has to do in terms of like creative right they just have to just have to produce the language that's all they have to do and when you do that over time not only can it familiarize them familiarize them better with just speaking the language on their own on their phone or on their computer on extempore it's just it's really really good practice and once you do this enough on extempore well then the recording recording submit mechanism becomes almost it's practically second nature for them so now i'm the student i jump in i say okay i'm ready to go let's do it i have exactly what you just saw me create i can play the this i can play my teacher's recording of this the weather today is just dandy and that mr castor used way too much emotion sometimes i can record myself the weather today is just dandy Mike said he wants to go to the park later, and I think that's a great idea. Stop recording. Again, just like you saw earlier, um, re-record, submit, play it back, hit submit. Okay, I'm going to show one more example, shifting and moving a little bit more advanced. Um, but again, I will take time to field any questions that we have about what I just did, this whole transition of going from you know extemporary 101, showing them how it works, low pressure tasks the oral reading is one of them the dictation is another one that i really like where you just you add an audio prompt of yourself saying something in the target language and then you can use a text response your students can record can just type out what you are saying and that's very low pressure as well and they can they can again get easy practice any other questions before i get into a little bit more advanced No, okay, that's totally fine. Okay, we are making excellent progress. So I'm gonna shift over one more time. So we gave some initial steps. We did a little introductory task, the 101, showing it how it works. We did the low pressure task of oral reading. I mentioned you can also do dictations. And then now finally, we're gonna add some timers. And so what this is, this whole, this whole process is starting small, starting basic, and then slowly adding on new things, right? Not just saying, okay, we're going to use extemporary. Here's a summative assessment. Start speaking spontaneously. Good luck. Work them into it, right? Take your time. I'm going to come back here. Now I'm going to create a new assessment. This is going to be a summative assessment. So when your students have finally reached that point, or even if you want to just give them a light challenge, you can say, hey, now we can really try something. Let's say summative task two. Let me get a due day. Individual again, how are they going to respond? They'll respond with audio. I'll say this is a summative assessment, which means on extempore, it will have timers. So now I say, okay, when they're going to see grades, I'm going to skip all this. When they, I'm going to limit time to review, I'm going to say, okay, yeah, you only have, we'll say 15 seconds to prepare your response. Time to respond, I'll give them 30 seconds to respond and no re-record. So it makes this a summative assessment after all. So now I can say, okay, task, summative task. Now I'm going to, let's say, okay, this weekend you would like to make plans with your coworker, Mike, but you're not sure when Mike is free. Look at the forecast, then suggest something to do with Mike, asking him if he is free at that time as well. So that's something to do with Mike in the target language, of course. All right. So now I'm gonna. I have a nice little prompt. I have a real-world task ready to use, which is I got a weather forecast. It's an absolutely gorgeous day here in Minneapolis. Um, 
and now I have I have a prompt, right? I have the task is ready, I have timers that are set. They really, there's a lot of sort of mental work that the student has to do before they can really res respond to this. They'll have to look at the image. They have the timer ticking down. They have all these things they have to do. So now I'm ready. If I wanted to not add another challenge, maybe I'll record myself being pretending to be who the friend is. And I might say, oh, you know, I'm free on Friday at two, but I'm busy at Friday at nine. That's an extra level. That's even more advanced that I would say. Um, but for now, I think I'm good. I have a summative assessment. I have a prompt. I have an image. I have timers. Let's save it. I can go back to my student side and we can do it. Okay, so drag this over, drag this back, and now you can see what this looks like from the student side. Again, I'm still in that same class. You see the one active, two completed, summative task, tells me to have timers, tells me what I have to do. I say, oh, okay, oh, there's my time to review, when it's due, how I'm gonna respond to it. Again, I get that warning, and now I can jump into it. This weekend, you like to make plans, I just read this to you guys. So I say, okay, oh, I really need to think about this. How am I going to do this? So now the student is feeling the pressure, right? You don't want them to have pressure the second you introduce them to this app. It's going to be a really bad first impression of them, right? Once they're used to it and they feel comfortable, then you do these types of questions. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's look at the forecast. Oh, my gosh. Timer, timer. What do I do? Uh, Monday, Monday doesn't look good, Mike. That's not the weekend, though. Maybe Sunday morning. Mike, what do you think? Sunday morning, can we go to the park? Are you free then? I think that would be fine. I have my response in the target language. Um, again, they notice they, they can't re-record it. Now they are finally getting into say, oh, okay, this is actually what this app is designed to be used for, right? This is, this is what my teacher wants me to do, produce spontaneous language. And it's obviously the student's goal as well. They submit, voila, they are done. So I really want to leave this open for questions. I didn't want to give, you know, 3000 examples on, on you know, getting your students used to it. But that's really the idea that I have in mind for this. And I'll bring back the uh, uh, PowerPoint for this real quick. That you start slowly. You take the introductory task and say, OK, hey, this is how it's used. Then you take something that's a low pressure and you do it for a while. Right? Those oral readings or dictations or anything else that's basic, basic speaking, I do those with my classes almost two or three times a week. Grading those is a different matter. That's for another presentation. Um, but it's really just to get them using the app consistently over time, right? And so that when you say, hey, go to extempore, hey, we're just going to do some extempore practice, it becomes sweet. Oh, this is just something on extempore. I've done this a million times. I know exactly what this is like versus, oh my gosh, oh, what is that thing? I can't remember how we did that. What? Mr. Kastner, what's my password? Stuff like that, right? So that that is the, the idea behind getting your students used to it, getting them comfortable and slowly introducing your students to extempore. So in just a few minutes, I will take some questions. When introducing your students to extempore, ideally, you can have your students join your class on extempore before you even meet. If you're higher ed, I know this is definitely possible. I'm not 100% sure about non-higher ed, you know, high school, middle school, elementary, whatever you're doing. Um, but it'd be really cool. It's really, really saves a lot of time when you can add them, have them add beforehand when you can have them add your class beforehand. You can add it into the syllabus, into the syllabus in our blog on this topic, you will see right here. Okay, at the top, getting started with extemporary first steps. I have text in here on things you can put into your syllabus. And even if it's, if you're teaching high school and middle school, sure, add it in right there. This is in our blog. I will put this in the chat for you guys to have very easy access to. Panelists and attendees. There's our blog on this topic. That's what a lot of this is pulled from. And then, oh yeah, using Extempore 101 intro task assignment. That's there for you. Um, Linda, real quick, I'll answer your question. Do the students share the password with the teacher or does this teacher have access to the student passbook automatically? They don't share, no, 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 they don't. I, I was, it was a little tongue in cheek, right? Because the, you're not gonna know their password as, as the student, as the instructor. I don't believe so, right, Mike? Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's, you're not going to know that. I was just saying, you know, they, they come to, you know, they come to you saying, Oh, I can't remember my password because we haven't used it in so long. Right. You want them to be consistently logging into it. That's all. Um, other tips for new teachers and students, consistency, just be consistent. Like I, like I mentioned, use it once, twice, three times a week. That will get them, you know, feeling comfortable with it. Uh, and then routine practice. I mentioned oral readings, dictations. And oh yes, by the way, there's a webinar on that. 
where I will go into a little bit more um, details on how to, on using extempore for routine practice, which is one way that I absolutely love doing it because if we want our students to improve using the target language and getting better and more comfortable doing it every single day is a great way to do so. Um, so yes, join before you meet, send them an email, add it to your syllabus, do whatever you need to do. Use the 101 intro task assignment. You can even have that in there for them. Right when they join, you say, okay, hey, you've joined my class. You'll notice that there's an extemporary 101 intro assignment. Try it, right? That saves you a ton of time. Being consistent and then doing it for routine practice. Check out the blog. Um, thank you, thank you for coming. Like I mentioned, this is a very brief little introduction. How to get your students comfortable with extemporary, introducing it to them. Please do not forget to leave feedback for this session on the Sketch app. Send us a tweet tweet using hashtag extemporary PD. You can win some prizes. Um, and then come see us tomorrow and Thursday for more sessions, including sessions on extempore sync and using extempore for all three modes with our friends from the Delaware Council for the Teaching of Foreign Languages, also known as DECTFL. If you have any questions, I would be happy to fill them now. And thank you again. While I wait for questions, I will go back and answer some of the ones that I saw earlier. Linda asked earlier, for now, every assignment is a graded assignment, correct? You can determine whether or not you grade them. You don't have to grade everything. You can give any type of feedback that you want. It doesn't have to be matched with a rubric. So if I come here and I go to this assessment, I can add, you'll see that I've already, I've already, excuse me, I've already, students have already started answering other than certain parameters can be modified. Um, so I can't provide the rubric. Now I'd have to create a new assessment. But if I do go to create a new assessment, I'll skip down all of this. I can create a rubric, a numeric score. And that's really when when you grade it, right? If you don't have a rubric to, 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 you know, against which you can score their response, then it's not gonna be graded. You can give feedback, say, hey, this is good. You mispronounced this word, whatever. But this, only when you add the rubric, is it graded? So no, not every assignment is graded unless you add the rubric feature. Jacqueline asked, is it different recordings for different students? Got that one, student password. Okay, I think I've answered most of these. Questions, please, 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 please do not feel, do not, be afraid to ask questions. I am happy to answer them. We'll put some more uh, notes in the chat. Also, last thing, I don't know how I forgot this. Please do not forget to, to check out our other sessions. I think I mentioned that. Linda asks, is it possible to set up a conversation style exercise? Oh, do I have the answer for you? The answer is yes. Um, Linda, can I, can I ask before I show a little demonstration, do you want asynchronous or synchronous? You want students to be talking at the exact same time, face to face, right to each other, or maybe record, send a message, student waits, listens, then they record and send a message because we have both features available. Synchronous, yeah. So I will just say for now, you go to video, you would go to, sorry, you go to group, synchronous rooms, number of students per room, how many you choose. This is a presentation for tomorrow. Pretty sure. Yes, it's on the schedule. Let me just check. Wednesday, July 14th, 11.30 Central Time, an in-depth guide to extempore sync. We will cover all of this. So I will say yes, and I invite you to attend that webinar tomorrow where you will learn all about how to use extempore sync. Other questions? AP style conversations, yes, as well. We have, I will direct you to a, our blog where yes, we do have AP conversations. Let me, oh, where am I going? I have the Zoom blog. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we do have a blog on, let's see, AP conversation, let's just show up. Here we go. Yeah, it's a tool for some AP simulated conversation and cultural comparison practice. We have had blogs on this in the blog, excuse me webinars on this in the past, they may, may or may not be on YouTube. I'm not 100% sure, I'd have to check. Um, but yeah, we one of the things we are constantly promoting is that on Extempore, you can create AP simulated conversations. The very, very, very simple response to this is that when you go to the question page, I'll just say AP conversation here. I'll just show you how this works real quick. Due date. Uh, this is going to be individual. They respond with audio. I'm not going to give a rubric. When I get to the question, right, and that blog explains a lot more about, you know, how to do this, why to do this, you know, extra details. 
but I'll say, you know, simulated conversation. And then all you do is you make sure when you click audio, I might say, what is your name? And then I leave space, leave space in between. How are you today? When do you graduate? Right, so I have that recording. The, the, the idea is that you ask the question first, you leave space, ask the next question, you leave space, ask the next question, leave eight or nine seconds, whatever you wanna do. And that the, then the important thing is once you have that in your directions, you make sure to very clearly tell your students, um, make sure you very clearly tell your students that they start their recording first, then play the audio from extempore. That way it captures the audio and you can hear yourself asking the questions, they respond. And then the, at the end, it sounds just like a simulated conversation. Kay asks, can you use different rubrics grading for different questions in the same assessment? So with the grading feature, if I go back to the assessment page. When you add the rubric, what you do is you create criteria. So these criteria match to, are aligned with all of the questions in one assessment. So each question would have the same rubric that is paired up against. If you want to use a different rubric, simply just create a new assessment and you can match, you can, you can categorize the questions that you want on that rubric in that assessment. You might call it, you know, summative assessment part one has one rubric, summative assessment part two has another rubric. Other questions, please keep them coming. These are great. Oh, sorry, Q and A. Oh my gosh, I just missed these. <laughs> uh, Kay's question has been answered, I believe. If we can't make a session, can we still view it as somehow says anonymous? Yes, you can. As I as I should have mentioned earlier, this session, if you mentioned it, if 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 you missed anything, excuse me, if you missed anything from this session, it is recording right now on Zoom. It will pop up for me on Zoom about ten minutes after this is over, and then I will upload it directly to YouTube, where you can view it again and you can see all of the previous sessions that we have had so far if you go back to sketch and you if you look i'll show you right here if you pull up this page you'll see here if you go to the previous days i might go to say okay let's let's look at what happened yesterday i go to monday say you want to know about the extemporary ambassador program that was something we had this was recorded you can view the video stream you just click it right here right the same goes with all of the other ones sam did like i mentioned sam did extemporary 101 today you can see that already passed, but I can click show earlier events, Extemporary 101, that was at 11.15 this morning. It is three o'clock right now, and I already got it up on YouTube. It's right here. So yes, you can you can, you can can definitely view a session once it is done. Uh, Chaos, will that change in the future? We are having a massive redesign of how assessment creation works, and I am not sure, but it might be part of that changes. You can suggest it at ideas.extemporyapp.com if you are so inclined. Anything else? This has been great. You guys have been really good. Lots of good questions. Lots of, uh, you know, it's been really good to share this with you. If there is nothing else, then I remind you, check out the rest of our sessions. Tweet, tweet, extempore, hashtag extempore PD. Please leave feedback for the session on the SketUp. It is very, very helpful to us. And do not forget to some, come see us tomorrow and Thursday for more fantastic, awesome sessions where you can learn so much about using extempore and teaching languages. I'll wait another 10 seconds and then I will stop recording. Oh, we have one more. Or maybe it's just a thank you. Ursula, it was lovely to have you. Glad that you learned a lot. Hope to see you in another one.